Good afternoon. My name is Richard Cronice, and today's topic is the Network Communication Model Formula. If you've been following my YouTube videos, you'll notice that I've been doing quite a few videos regarding PMP formulas. This one just happens to be from the planning process. So, returning to this concept, have you studied this formula as part of the plan communications process? Perhaps these hints will help you remember. How many lines of communication are there in a four-person project? Perhaps your PMP instructor asked you that question. Well, this one's fairly easy. You just have to remember you've got four people. You're one of the four and you're managing three people. And you can draw a square and then you draw the lines back and forth. And when you count them, you'll determine that you have six lines of communication. Now, that was easy. But, how many lines of communication are there in a 25-person project? It's incredibly difficult unless you know the formula that is needed. And believe me, this question can come up in various forms during project management. And yes, it is part of PMBOK's body of knowledge. So once again, how would you calculate the lines of communication for 25 people? Does the network communication model formula exist in PMBOK 5? Well, I've looked and I cannot find it, so I welcome any reader to look in the PMBOK 5 PDF or in their actual book and tell me if they find it. I could not. It wasn't in my PMBOK 4 book either, but it's in my notes. It's in my 175 page uh, pages of study notes, and I believe I learned it in a Kim Heldman book or perhaps in my PMP class. And so, yes, you need to know that formula. And there it is n times the quantity n minus 1 divided by 2. Before we begin, who is Richard Cronice? Just a little bit of advertisement. My name is unique. It is my brand. I am the only Richard Cronice in the U.S. or anywhere. There's more information about me at the end of this YouTube video. And more importantly, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Leave comments. Give me new ideas for videos. And special thanks to my YouTube visitors. Today, December 23rd, 2013, I have over 11,500 views per month. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure serving you and getting your great feedback. So, have you ever tried saying hello to three people uh, on your project team? This is actually a snapshot taken from PMBOK 5. It's the uh, uh, figure 10.4. You're the sender and you work on a message. You transmit it to someone but there's some noise. And what kind of noise is it? Well, maybe the project person uh, that you're sending it to had a bad day. Or maybe uh, they're feeling ill that day. Or perhaps the two of you have had problems before. So you think you're just saying good morning to them and they may be interpreting it in a very different way. Well, he or she receives your message and then they, they acknowledge the message. They send it back to you and you have some noise. Perhaps you're a bit busy when they said hello to you and you weren't quite as kind as you might have been. Or perhaps, once again, um, you didn't like the tone in their voice or perhaps uh, you didn't hear their tone correctly. So there's noise uh, between the person sending the hello back to you and yourself. So there's a lot of co complexities in terms of people sending simple messages. So that's how difficult it might be in sending a simple hello saying hello to someone in the hallway. Now have you ever tried telling 24 project members in a meeting they could not take a vacation during December while on a project? Now in this kind of communication there is a huge potential for misunderstandings in that message. So what does this have to do with the formula? The network communication formula may seem simple to me but it may seem difficult to you. The point is that when you're just communicating on a small project, even with three or four people, even just saying hello may be a difficulty. Just imagine how difficult it is when you start dealing with projects of 10 or 15 or 20 people. You have to understand the communication nodes or complexity. Once again, the communication uh, difficulty here for four people is pretty simple, just six lines of communication. But as you start having more and more people, these lines of communication become more numerous and more complex. So returning to the formula, the formula that you need to know that you probably have never seen in the PMBOK book and maybe, just maybe, heard it from an instructor is n times n minus 1 divided by 2. Well, 
to help you out and is equal to the project members on the team. If you have a four person if you have a four person team and you are the fourth person, that means that n equals four. So let's visit Excel for a simple and complex problem discussing this. So as you may know, if you've dealt with some of my other YouTube videos, you know that I'm very fond of using Excel and actually I wrote an ebook on it teaching people how to use Excel better and it's called the world's shortest Excel book. But let's take a look at the, uh, the use of this how many lines of communication in a four person project. So once again the four corners here and you know you had six so that's a nice way to start. So just doing some of the math I'll try to walk you through on it. I'll do it simply if you're very good with math, skill, with math skills this will be very very easy for you. You can just do the formula all by itself but if math is a bit harder perhaps an explanation is good. This four is equal to the number of people on the project that's equal to the n. Now the four one I put that in there because you will have four minus one and that's equal to three. So the numerator the top part of this equation really is four times the quantity of three and that's equal to twelve. But you're not done yet because that result needs to be divided by two. So over here twelve divided by two is equal to six. And just so you can see it better I did it uh, with a graphic once again. So if you have four per people on a project and you are one of the four you have six lines of communication. So here's the formula uh, and here is the actual demonstration visually. Well this becomes a whole lot more complex when you have 25 people on the project. So here we have 25 is equal to n and 25 minus 1 is equal to 24. So what you have is 25 times 24 that is the numerator and that is the number 600. You divide it by 2 that's over here and so that's 300. So the lines of communication in a 25 person project there are 300 possible lines of communication. Uh, a lot of lines of communication and it, that communicating can become difficult even if you're using email. Now I put this here just as a demonstration. This is just a, a simple calculator that I built. Uh, if you're decent with Excel you can build it also. Uh, I have it here for 14 and let's just say that uh, you want to change a number to, uh, to 19. So I'll type 19 and bang over here it shows you that the uh, lines of communication are 171. But just using the formula again uh, n is equal to 19 n minus 1 is equal to 18. So 19 times 18, that's your numerator, that is 342 divided by 2 over here equals 171. So that's the formula in use. Now just to give you a taste of why the uh, this communication model and knowing this formula is very useful, let's say that you have a project with three people. So typing in three, so the lines of communication for that are three. Well, let's say you just go up to nine people. So I pick up six more people. You might think that, okay, it might have been three times that, but no, it's not. It's a whole lot more. Going from three people to a nine-person project means that your lines of communication have gone from three to 36. All of a sudden, saying good morning, doing a simple hello becomes a lot more complex because of messaging and encoding and noise, things that we discussed before. So what does that suggest? Well, as your project grows, it suggests breaking it up into project teams. Hopefully this simple example uh, using Excel has helped. Let's return to the outline. So you've already seen the use of Excel for a simple and complex problem. Now this formula that you've learned, n times the quantity n minus 1 divided by 2, to my best knowledge, is not listed in PMBOK 5. And it wasn't listed in PMBOK 4. If someone can find it, that's great. I believe that uh, I learned it uh, reading Kim Heldman's book or during a uh, uh, PMP class. If you find it in PMBOK 4 or 5, please let me know. Leave a comment uh, in the uh, comment section for YouTube. Now, wherever it exists, it, it is real. And I think you should know it for your PMP test. Let's just say that that's a reasonable bit of advice because it's a really simple formula. If it comes comes up, and I certainly cannot guarantee that, if the formula comes up, you're ready to deal with it. 
Now, in terms of memorizing it, I would probably take the formula that I just mentioned, this network communication model formula, and I would put it on my brain dump. This is a, a brain dump screen. Uh, if you want to find it, you need to look in my YouTube videos regarding the PNP formula brain dump, which is very, very popular. Um, this is the, uh, the formula dump, not with all my formulas, but uh, just how I began. I use a, a diagram, I put in some formulas, and definitely you want to put this formula here somewhere on your formula brain dump, however you build it. And yes, I think it's a good idea when you begin the PMP test to quickly write down not only the 47 processes, but also your formula brain dump. So, in summary, remember the formula. It is n times the quantity n minus 1 divided by 2, where n is equal to the number of people on the project, including yourself. If you're uncertain of the formula and you have to recreate it for the test or perhaps just, you know, during a discussion, probably the easiest way to remember it is to test out whatever you think the formula is with a simple um, four-person project because the answer, very obviously, is six lines of communication. So once you've refreshed your memory as to what the formula is, then you can move on to doing the math for a larger project team. And uh, most likely your math is going to be fine, as long as you've checked it out with a team of four, perhaps five. Now, why are we doing this? Remember, if your project team is growing too big, it's time to consider breaking your project into teams. The communication will probably become cleaner and more efficient and you need good to great communication to finish your projects. Thanks for visiting today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I do hope you'll subscribe. A lot of folks are subscribing and they're even, t even telling their friends about it. So that's been uh, very uh, refreshing and it really warms my heart to know that people are enjoying my videos and learning from them. So my name is Richard Cronice. Uh, it is a unique name, a unique brand. Uh, someone suggested that I use this technique because I'm the only one out there. So I'm the only Richard Cronice in the U.S. or anywhere. I am a PMP from Chicago, Illinois, USA, as of June 2013. I am a business analyst, project manager, and I do a bunch of SharePoint. I am a SharePoint evangelist in Chicago, Illinois, USA. And I welcome new projects, training engagements, employers and recruiters, uh, they're welcome to contact me. Send a brief message uh, to me on LinkedIn. Please tell your uh, friends about this study group. Uh, that would be really great. And uh, recently I received two inquiries to do training uh, for Japan and Canada. That was uh, very humbling and, and I'm grateful for that. I'm working on it. And for the first time ever in a video, I'm encouraging you, if you have a Microsoft SharePoint project, I know this isn't PMP, but trust me, if you're a project manager, at some point you will need to consider using SharePoint or perhaps you already have a SharePoint project. I'm now accepting Microsoft SharePoint project requests from my YouTube visitors. If you need MS SharePoint Consulting for your project, please contact me on LinkedIn. Have a great day. Thank you so much for visiting. Take care.